anyway, like I say, I was looking up at that uh, thing that um, Mr. Mr. Sensor was talking about, uh, that comet. That would be Comet Schumacher Levy 9 that struck Jupiter. Zaphod, what do you think? 10 out of 10 for style, but... But let's see what he scores for good thinking. So in a recent debate, Flatsoid was commenting or claiming that the planets, etc., are just lights in the sky. So I gave the example of Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9, which struck Jupiter and was caught photographically. Now, Zoid hadn't actually heard of that before. OK, so I gave him the link so he could look into it. This is his response. Because there's some interesting things I found out about it that... Um shows it's not as innocent as he thinks it is. Are you saying it's yet another guilty comet? Okay, so anyway, he says Comet Shoemaker, Levy 9, that was the one that apparently the fragments were hitting in Jupiter for months and stuff, and you could see it with the telescope, blah, 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 blah. But if you look at it, and it's literally discovered by Strong's Carolyn, Eugene M. Shoemaker, and Levy in 1993. It had been captured by Jupiter's gravity and was orbiting the planet at the time. It was located on the night of March 24 in a photograph taken with, with a 46 centimeter, 18 inch Smith telescope. Um, that's not a telescope everybody at home can use, can they? So remember Mr. Sensible said everybody could see it for a few months. Yeah, everybody that had this kind of telescope. <laughs> Since when do you guys have this kind of telescope at home? Did I say that, Flatsoid? You wouldn't want to straw man me now, would you? Let's have a look at a short portion of that debate where I was talking about things that show that objects in the sky are real physical objects and brought up Shoemaker Levy 9. Well, for instance, with the moon, uh, we can see craters that have been made by uh, vehicles that have crashed into the moon. Uh, a few years back, there was Comet Schumacher Levy, which broke up into a dozen pieces. And um, using um, orbital mechanics uh, with, with all the various laws of gravity and so on, they calculated it was going to hit Jupiter, and indeed it did. And we could see the impacts on Jupiter for quite some time, more than one rotation of Jupiter, and uh, the impacts came back round again. That's interesting. Uh, okay, if you've not got, seen that, have a, it's Shoemaker. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah I'll have to go and look at it. Shoemaker, spelled as it as you'd think, hyphen Levy, L E V Y. Okay. Shoemaker, make a Levy. Um, it, it was quite astonishing. Um, I do have another super chat from Mister E Man. Thank you, uh, Mister E Man, for fifty dollars Australian. Thank you, my friend. So it appears I didn't say that everybody could see it, either naked eye, or with binoculars or home grade telescopes. No, I said that we could see it, as in we, humans, people on Earth, using powerful telescopes. So that kind of stood out to me, um, how you would need a telescope like that to see what they're saying. At this point, step in one of his guests, who is also one of his moderators, Mr. Michael Mutum and Bootum. But what, what's, um, what's claimed behind it? It's just another light in the sky, isn't it? They're claiming Jupiter is physical, it's a physical sphere, and the comet that they observed um, had fragments hitting into it, and it could be, it gave um, these, uh, these uh, craters, you could say, in the clouds, because remember, they believe it to be a gas giant. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it. For months mm -hmm. end, and everyone could see it. But it's things like the Hubble Space Telescope see it. No one from home, like a normal actual, let's just say, a <coughs> amateur astronomer would be able to see it. So that's one thing I found very odd. It's not very odd. You need skill and equipment to capture images like this. This is not Shoemaker Levy. This was someone, a Mr. John McKeon, who captured the flash of an impact on Jupiter in 2016. He was very fortunate. He used an 11-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope. So yes, you can do it, but you're going to need the right tools. Just waving a P1000 around out of focus ain't going to cut the mustard. So yeah, that was, uh, that was something very interesting to me. And then he brought this up, which I've never heard of, but 
yeah, that's what I've been looking into now. Excellent. Well, I'm sure we're going to really enjoy your research. Did a few digging and yeah, I can't find how well, any it, normal person can actually see it. The, the thing is, the guy's just reading this and then quoting it as a proof like uh, it's ridiculous. Exactly. I didn't just read this on Wikipedia. I happen to have been alive in 1994 and it was all over mainstream news about this comet that was going to strike Jupiter. I watched as photos were shown of the various impacts. This was major, major news. It's not just some random little wiki article. Okay, uh, yeah, there we go. See, copyright ESA 994. Look at this brilliant art, guys. Look at that. That's so realistic. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> it's no use giggling and getting all moist and unnecessary. What you're looking at is an animation that's just illustrating what was going to happen. Look how realistic this is, guys. Wow. I love it. Check it out. Get back to it. Check there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, you've had a laugh at 1990s animation. Now tell us of your research about Shoemaker Levy 9. Honestly, there's some very, very dim. <laughs> Ballers. <laughs> my mum's just said fake. That's my mum. My mum's listening. My mum's is, um, is fake and all like. that. Amazing. Khan's mum can spot that a computer graphic video with a dinosaur in is fake. Yeah, let's see. Amazing space videos, guys. Long lasting impacts of Comet Shoemaker Levy 9. So, we're going to see some of your research now, then, Zoid. Yeah, guys, it's amazing that the only people that can supply us with images for this is. ESA and NASA and stuff. Weird that, eh? The same people that only supplies things like gas giants, where you can take your telescopes and you don't literally see the same things that they show. Earlier, I showed you imagery of Jupiter that the amateur astronomer had got. Jupiter varies between 365 and 601 million miles away. This beautiful image that you're showing now is of the broken up parts of a comet, Shoemaker 11 9, which was only a couple miles in diameter before it broke up. Imagery at those sort of distances. That's stunning. I mean, look at these so-called uh, impact points on, on uh, Jupiter that they're talking about. This is much, 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 much further away on the uh, model than the moon, correct? I'm going for yes. Mm -hmm. So why is it possible to see this stuff? But they can't see a much, 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 much closer moon, lunar lander, or the flag. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. But yeah, like that, that was, so if I knew more about this, I would have asked the sensible, why is it that we're only getting these images from space agencies? Yeah. Why can normal, uh, the normal uh, amateur astronomers not have images? Because I can't find anything for it. Correct, Zoid. That would be because no amateur astronomers have produced images like this. Presumably because no amateur astronomers own the Hubble Space Telescope. <laughs> but they, 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 they say, they, they, say they, they, um, they do say they use um, Photoshop, they do, don't they? Because it has to be. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? they to it be. is Photoshop yeah. because it has to be. Pajamas, Crookshank, if you're going to use the Fleur's cherry pick meme of choice, use it at the right time. Hmm. It's a rendering. They have to take all mm. the different layers and stick it onto one another. Zoid, this isn't a rendering. It's a photograph. Why would you need video fix if you can just take a video? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> <Let's begin again. laughs> I'm sorry, but this is the most rubbish thing. I'm beginning to think that your research is not very deep. What's all these little red dots I'm looking at? We're like, they look like little fires. That's supposed, that to, be the impact, that's supposed to be the impact craters. This is the level of your research. A row of little fires, impact craters on Jupiter. The photo you are looking at is 
of the broken up Shoemaker Levy comment on its collision course to Jupiter. That image is not of impact craters. On the very wiki page you showed at the start of your stream, it says under that very photograph, Shoemaker Levy 9 disrupted comment on a collision course. Total of 21 fragments taken in July 1994. Oh dear, Zoid. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mr. Sensible, if you're watching this, this would be my rebuttal to you. Um, it's fake. <laughs> Brilliant. So following your research into Shoemaker Levy, which I said would evidence that Jupiter is a physical object, on your live stream, yourself, Pajamas Crookshank, and Michael come to the conclusion it's fake. Fantastic. March 24th, 1993, Carolyn and Eugene Shoemaker and David Levy discovered this, Shoemaker Levy 9, a comet that was broken up and orbiting Jupiter. It's believed it only just been broken up as it passed within the Roche limit of Jupiter a year or two beforehand and had probably been orbiting for around 20 to 30 years. Using a subtle blend of maths, orbital mechanics and stirring in a little gravity, they calculated the orbit of Shoemaker-Levy and they saw something wonderful. They saw that it was going to collide with Jupiter. This was an incredible once in a lifetime opportunity. The chance to see a major impact event. NASA and astronomers around the world prepared themselves in order to capture and gain as much information as they possibly could. There were 21 main fragments which were predicted to strike Jupiter over a period of about six days and they varied from a couple of hundred meters to two kilometers in diameter. Images were captured like these ones above of some of the impacts. The typical cloud top temperature of Jupiter is minus 143 degrees centigrade. When they struck, they were reaching peak temperatures of 23,700 degrees centigrade. As Jupiter rotated, scars from the impacts came into view. These scars were larger than the size of the Earth. They consisted of dust from the comet and gases stirred up from deeper levels within Jupiter. Images showing the effects were taken in many different wavelengths and spectroscopy showed changes to the atmospheric makeup of the surface of Jupiter for many, many months. There is no doubt that this happened. The comet was a physical object that could be photographed. Its path, its trajectory, was calculated based on orbital mechanics requiring gravity and mass. A prediction was made as to when it would strike Jupiter, and that prediction held true. Jupiter is a real physical object, and that is fact. So Zoid, I am going to give you a little bit of credit for not just ignoring Schumacher Levy, which I mentioned, but Zephod, how do you score him? Yeah, okay, so 10 out of 10 for style, but minus several million for good thinking, huh? I agree. You have seen the evidence. What I want to know is what is your excuse? I'm a South African. You can clearly hear I'm a South African. Diplomatic community. It's just been revoked. <laughs>